All right, guys, let's get a good round of applause going for our Ratchet and Clank future Kraken time round with Lombax. Good luck, man. Best of luck to you. All right, hello, everyone. Um, so just a quick note for the person doing the time. Um, there's a cutscene that the game starts with, and the time for this game doesn't start until after that cutscene. Um, but it's kind of long, so I'm just going to start and do some intro stuff, and then I'll tell you when to start. Cool. So we're playing on casual difficulty, because it's the fastest. All right. So yeah, uh, welcome everyone to Ratchet and Clank Future, a crack in time. Uh, this is the third game in the Future series of Ratchet and Clank games for the PS3. Uh, it was released in 2009. It actually, um, it was first released in the US on October 27th in 2009. So at midnight tonight, this game is gonna turn nine years old, which is pretty cool. I don't know if that was planned in the schedule, but uh, that's just kind of a cool coincidence one way or another. Um, this game is different from a lot of other games in the Ratchet and Clank series because Ratchet and Clank are separated from most of the game. Um, so you kind of switch off playing as them, or at least you're supposed to. Um, we're going to skip almost all of the Clank gameplay, um, but the very first thing we're going to be doing is playing as Clank. So Clank plays pretty differently from Ratchet. Uh, most of his sections in the game are puzzle sections, but those are the ones we're going to be skipping. At the beginning, we're basically just doing a little tutorial thing with Clank, where we're going to run like through the area in about two or three minutes. Um, so the way Clank moves is kind of unique. He, um, he can jump, and then he can do mid-air jumps. He has like three double jumps, basically. And when you do a double jump with Clank, he falls really slowly. He has um, this like helipack thing that comes out, and he falls really slowly. But you can cancel that jump animation by pressing R2. So ideally, when you're moving around, you jump, and then you do a double jump and cancel it, a second double jump and cancel it, a third double jump and cancel it, and then repeat that whole sequence over and over. And the reason you do this is because Clank walks really slowly, but he, he moves faster when he's in the air, basically. Um, I won't always do the full three double jumps, but that's the summary of what's going to be going on with the movement um, and what's about to come up after this cutscene. Um, another note is uh, get used to these cutscenes because there's, there's a couple of them throughout the run. Um, some better than others, some shorter than others. So gameplay is going to start in about in a couple seconds here. So get ready to start the timer. I'll just say go when it when you should start it. All right, so it's kind of hard to see in this beginning part because I just fell to the ground, but you can see me doing that movement I was just talking about where I'm jumping with Clank and kind of canceling the animation of his jump. And that's why it looks like he kind of just bounces around in the air like that. Um, so that's mostly what I'm going to be doing with him, just running through this area as quickly as possible. This room is a forced camera tutorial, um, and it actually tells you controls that are inaccurate if you're not using default controls, um, which is kind of funny. Um, but there's no way to skip this. Um, another thing that tends to happen in this room is the first time you load up a file, a lot of the times this room will lag a lot. It looks like I'm getting some of that right now. Yeah, I am. Um, it kind of messes up the timing of his dialogue, and it usually costs you about three seconds, but it's not a very big deal. So usually when I'm doing serious attempts, I'll kind of start up a file before streaming, and then uh, just to get rid of the lag there. All right, so here I'm going to jump over to the right. Um, this whole area is basically just about moving through it as quickly as possible, um, as close to a straight line as you can. And the game wants us to punch these boxes, but we're just going to jump around them. We don't have time for that. Hurry up, 
the movement of the boxes in this area is completely random. Um, so sometimes boxes will like randomly fall in your path and you'll kind of have to play around that, but it's pretty rare. All right, this next room is a bit tricky. I'm going to try a setup to land on top of this wall. OK, I didn't quite get it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm um, jumping on that thing off to the side to get through this room before a platform would have appeared that I would have been able to use to get through earlier. This enemy tries to mess with the camera, so I kind of turn it down to avoid him. Oh, no. <laughs> Sometimes the game stutters here, and um, it eats your inputs. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to do something kind of similar here. I'm going to wait for a second for some platforms to come, and then jump out and try to land right on them. And that's pretty much it for Clank. Um, you're going to see him in a lot of cutscenes, but you're not really going to see any Clank gameplay for the rest of the run, other than about 30 seconds at the very end. Um, so from now on, it's pretty much only going to be Ratchet. So we have another cutscene. Um, after this cutscene, we're going to be on the first planet in the game, which is called Zolar. Or actually, the planet's called Quantos. The area on the planet that we're in is called Zolar. Um, and in this planet, we're going to be it's essentially a long escort mission where um, we have to get our friend Captain Quark through the area as quickly as possible, and then eventually we escort another character who we'll meet partway through the level. Um, this first level is also pretty basic. There's a couple tricks here and there, but it's kind of like an introductory level as well. So the main thing here is there's a lot of small optimizations with movement and stuff. Um, but movement for this game doesn't really pick up until about half, about 30 minutes into the run where you get an item called the Hover Boots that allow Ratchet to move a lot faster and also to do some unintended uh, skips. Um, this game has had a pretty small community for most of its existence as a speedrun. Um, I started running it about four years ago. And at the time, there was only one other active runner. Um, this is back in the days when we used Speed Demos Archive, if anyone remembers that ancient website. Um, so there was a user by the name of Red's the Name um, who did a lot of the groundwork for this game. He found most of the tricks, even, I mean, there's been new ones found since then, obviously, but he found a lot of the tricks that we still use today. And he did almost all of the early routing. Um, and it's kind of funny because around when he stopped playing, I started playing. So we were never really running at the same time. Um, and a couple other runners have picked up the game at different times since then. Um, the most notable of those being, I'll give some shout outs really quick, uh, Perilous Peanut, who got a really good time in both Any% and New Game Plus for this uh, for a while. Um, Mobius, who found a lot of tricks that I'll talk about later in the run. Uh, he kind of like was like Red's second coming. He found a lot of the newer strats that I'll talk about later. And uh, Wed who runs the longer categories for this game. So right now I'm escorting Quark. I kind of left him behind because um, I killed most of those guys, but he can finish the rest of them on his own usually. Yeah, it looks like he got him. And because I'm here a little quicker than the game wanted me to be, the audio tends to overlap or get cut off. So the first really minor trick is going to come up right here. Um, instead of walking around on the platforms to the right, I'm going to jump off of some rocks on the left over here. Um, and I'm going to ignore the guys Quark is fighting, because as soon as I raise the bridge, he'll just run past anyways. So I just jump past that stuff, raise this, and he'll join me in a second. Also, as soon as I do that, I'm going to buy an item at the weapon shop up here. Um, 
you don't buy very many weapons. There's not very much you need to beat this game. But this one is definitely worth getting. You start with 1,000 volts, which is the currency in this game. And that weapon costs 1,000 volts. So the, the developers are really trying to tell you, like, hey, you should, you should get this weapon. And it's really good. Um, it's the main weapon we're going to be using for most of the early game. And it throws bombs. So right now I have to save this woman's three kids. Um, the first two I do that with by, oh no, that was not good. These first two I do that for by killing the enemies around them. Okay, that's good, I got the double on that one. That should kill all of them. No, I missed one. All right, not a good start to that. The second one's essentially the same thing. Um, the second one has a bit of RNG in how many of the enemies spawn. There can be three to five and their positions are random. So ideally there's three and they're right next to each other. Uh, that's not very good because they were kind of far away. It doesn't matter too much. And now this, this next one um, is a bit different. We're supposed to do a platforming sequence to get to him, but we're gonna skip the whole platforming sequence. Um, so this is the first like real trick of the run. So what you can do is you can get on top of this arch if the game will cooperate with me. There you go. And from up here you can jump to this platform which is the end of the, <laughs> which is the end of the platforming sequence. You can make that jump, I promise. Um, it's actually not very difficult. Uh, this runs off to a bit of a shaky start, but that's okay. It's a it's a marathon run. That's how they go. Could throw in a quick donation for you if you like. Uh, yeah, go ahead. All right, we've got ten dollars from Patrick Jones, who says best of luck to Lombax on the run. Let's go fast. I'm trying. <laughs> you got this, I believe. There we go. That's what that's supposed to look like. So a lot of these um, jumps that you're not supposed to be able to make, the key to making them is to delay when you think you're supposed to jump a bit. Because um, you can actually kind of run off the corners of stuff um, further than it looks like you can. So right now I'm just waiting for those guys to walk over here um, and then they're going to open this door for me and we're going to meet the other character I have to escort. While I'm waiting, I can uh, do this, which is kind of cool. Doesn't really do anything, but it looks funny. All right, so this guy uh, is the chief of these alien dudes and the game is now switched from escorting Quark to escorting him. So now we only care about him and Quark doesn't matter anymore. These first two groups of enemies here, you can just run past. You, the game only checks if you've killed this last group before proceeding. So you just run past the first two and fight this group. And we just use the bomb a lot. And that audio cue means that you've finished it. And no matter where the chief is after that point, he'll just run ahead and advance. Um, he was pretty far ahead, so that was, that was good. It's kind of RNG dependent, like sometimes he'll get stuck fighting the other groups behind you, and sometimes he won't, and he didn't really that time. And now we're gonna run ahead and talk to him again, but we're gonna beat him to where he's supposed to be. The ship's trashed. There's no way we'll be able to repair it. But the Zoni can! Meet me at How about another good luck donation? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> We've got $5 from Radmax525, who says, Kraken Time is one of my favorite games ever. So excited to see it here at GDQ. Good luck to the runner. So right now I'm just talking to this guy. This is a good time for donations if you have more. I do. Uh, we've got a $25 donation from Musey148, who says, been watching the recordings for a long time for GDQ. This is the first time catching it live and donating. Just wanted to say good luck to Lombax in this Ratchet and Clank run, and good luck to the rest of the runners. Thank you. <laughs> also, another quick reminder, you guys, to that Turok 100%. I t I'm telling you, we're getting close now. We are getting close. We are currently at 1834 out of 2,500. So little by little, I believe, I believe. So I'm waiting for this door to lower right now. Um, I'm about to run through an area here. 
that um, what you're supposed to do in this part is run through this area, get something, and then walk back out. Uh, you're supposed to collect two Zoni here. Zoni are the main collectible in this game. Um, but we're only going to get one of them. Um, I'll explain how we do that in a second. It's a, another pretty simple trick. Um, and so we're going to skip walking all the way back through this tunnel area that we're in right now in a second. Um, we will have to make up for it later by getting a Zoni to make up for the one we're going to skip, but it does save a lot of time, uh, enough to be worth it. So when I get this vessel right here, two Zoni are going to come out. And you're supposed to get the one that's like right in front of you first. But you can get the other one. It still has collision and everything. It's just flying around above you. So I'm just going to grab the one up here instead, like that. And the game will now teleport me to where I was supposed to get that zoning, which was back through the tunnel. So now I'm, just, I'm all the way through the tunnel, and I can just leave. So it skips a lot of walking back. Um, if you didn't need to get more zoning later, this would save about 30 to 40 seconds. Um, but we do need to get one to make up for that one. And I'll explain what we need zoni for a little bit later in the run. Uh, right now, we're going to fight a bunch of enemies. So if you have more donations, uh, this would be a good time. All right. We have a $5 donation from Mobius122, who says, Lombax, your work over the past four years on this category has been incredible. Seeing a crack in time at a GQ event is 100% well-deserved. Good luck from the entire RAC community. Thanks, dude. That's the Mobius that I was mentioning earlier, who uh, found a lot of the newer tricks in this game. Nice. Oh no, I missed these guys. That's not supposed to happen. We've also got a $10 donation in from Pickles for Nickels 151 who says, all right, get me in for a chance at that Shovel Knight soundtrack. So if you listen carefully there, the, the guy we're escorting, his audio overlaps, and he says like multiple things at the same time because we get through the area faster than we're supposed to. Um, Right here, I'm going to make very sure that I kill all of these little enemies here, because if any of them get past, um, they keep the chief from advancing, and you lose a lot of time later. We're kind of at the last part of this level right here. Um, there's one last trick we're going to do here, where we're going to try and um, first kill these guys really quickly, and then kill a blue ship that drops a bigger enemy before it drops the enemy. So hopefully, you'll see what I mean in a second. So this blue ship is about to drop an enemy that we don't want to deal with, so we're going to try and kill it. I might not have gotten it. OK, we got it, just barely. Nice. Um, timing's not too precise, but you have, to, you have to kill the first group of enemies pretty quickly to have time to do that. So at least I got one thing right on, on Zolar. <laughs> All right, so now we're just going to grab this last zoni, which the game thinks is the third zoni we got here, but it's actually only the second. Um, and that's going to have some kind of weird consequences in a second. Because sh the story of the game up to this point is that we kind of crashed here, and our ship is broken. And those three Zoni are supposed to repair our ship so we can use it again. Um, so we're supposed to have three, because that's supposed to be how many you need to repair the ship, which is called the Aphelion. But since we don't have three, uh, the upgrade we're going to get here is going to be not normal. Upgrade undefined, if you saw it there, is a pretty good upgrade. So that's the first planet. Um, that was pretty bad execution of the first planet, but we got through it. Um, next, we're going to go to Vorsalon's ship. Um, we're going to go there twice in the run. You go here once now and once in the third sector in the game. Um, the first time you go there, it has the first kind of like difficult trick in the run, which is called door clip. Um, I'll talk more about that when I get up to it. Um, before we get there, um, a couple things to note. First of all, you're, whenever I'm moving around in space with the ship, you're going to notice me rolling like this um, at this kind of weird angle. Um, rolling is faster than just going straight. But if you roll at a certain angle, you can get the speed from moving forward and from rolling. So you, that's kind of just the optimal way to move around in space. Right now, I have to kill twelve. Sorry, 25 of these green ships before. I can land on Vorslan ship, which is where I want to go. There's a lot of RNG in these ship parts. You get random upgrades while you're fighting ships, and some are a lot better than others. Uh, OK, I got one of the good ones, but I didn't really use it well. So this is kind of medium. 
the ships. Come on, there we go. Um, most of this level is pretty straightforward as well. Um, so there are really three main things that determine how good your time is for this next level, which are how good your ships are, how good your boss fight is, and how quickly you get door clip. Hopefully door clip goes well, because um, door clip is kind of the first thing in the run that like kills a lot of runs. Usually it's pretty easy to get a run to Vorslan 1, um, but a lot of runs end on that trick, especially for newer runners. So when we land here, um, these jet things, we're supposed to like wait for them and lower these bridges to get past them, but we can just run off to the side like this and just go around them. This one we still have to break because that one goes continuously and we can't get past it unless we break it. We're also introduced to these, these ramps in front of me are called grav ramps or gravity ramps. Your gravity changes when you're walking on them, as you can see. And uh, they're really problematic. We're not really going to exploit them much in, in this uh, level, but later in the game, we're going to see that there are a lot of problems with how those are, are programmed. Can we expect some fun glitching from this? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the fact that it changes your gravity is probably not something they should have messed too much around with. Mm -hmm. So right now we're kind of just walking through this area. Um, we're going to do, I mean, this isn't really a trick, but there's a minor little skip you do here where um, in a second we're going to walk off the side of this gravity ramp to just skip walking all the way around it. So if you look to my left right now, this gravity ramp ends up here, so you can just fall down like that. Yeah, not the best level design. All right, so something that's going to be really important uh, right now is the level of my bomb glove. So weapons level up in this game, which matters a bit. So if you look in the top left, it shows you the level of the weapon. I want that to be almost to, um, I want it to be like about to level up, basically. And the reason for that is because when weapons level up, their ammo automatically refills. And since I'm about to fight a boss, I want that to happen during the boss, so I have to spend less time during the boss fight getting ammo. So I'm kind of making sure I kill the right amount of guys with the bomb glove right now, and just to set that up. So this part here, I don't need this, but there's no way to walk through this hallway without getting it, so you just have to grab it. So we're getting door clip. Um, so what door clip is, uh, you can stand on top of enemies briefly in this game and jump off of them to get a little higher. And by doing that in this area, you can grab an edge in this doorway to clip out of bounds. So hopefully it goes well. Eh, it's not a good start. Okay, well, we got it, but it was kind of not the best. Um, so the fact that I'm at three health is pretty bad, because if I die during the boss fight, I'm going to have to do a lot of stuff again. So it means I'm going to have to play this boss fight really safe, which is normally you'd want to just run at him and kind of not care about your health. But I have to pay more attention to that. I missed the, I'm one bomb short of getting the level up that I wanted, so I have to go get Extra ammo there. Right. Okay, that was that was very convenient. Ah. I'm just gonna be really safe here. Okay. Um, so there's another thing in this game you can do where you can um. In some places, if you save and then reload the game, it will move you closer to where your ship is. And saving and loading the game takes a long time in real time. But for the, for the leaderboards for this game, we use the in-game timer because um, the in-game timer in this game doesn't count certain things. It doesn't count cutscenes 
loading screens, and time spent on the pause menu. The most important of those being loading screens, because those can vary randomly, like how long certain things take to load. So the in-game timer for this game is more accurate than um, real time. And so because of that, you can use save loads to cut out time from the game in the in-game time, but it takes a lot longer in real time. There's one you can do on after that boss fight right there that saves about five seconds in-game time, but takes like 40, 45 seconds in real time, so I, I didn't do it, even though it would be optimal to do it there. Um, in the run, there are three that are optimal to do. I'll see how many I end up doing. Got time for a quick donation? Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> we have a, do a $10 donation from KateBoy96, who says, Ratchet & Clank was my first PS2 game. Love it, and good luck. Thanks. So I just did something pretty important. Um, it might not have looked like much, but this is a really important glitch in this game. Um, what I did was, so after beating Vorcelon's ship, you get the coordinates to go to the next sector. So for Ratchet, there are four sectors in space that you, you go between. In between each of them, you're supposed to switch off and play as Clank. That's why it's playing a cutscene having to do with Clank right now, because the story's kind of switching back and forth. But um, if you fly up to planet Quantos and press triangle to start landing on the planet, you retain some of the controls for like a second before the ship actually lands there. And so you can press triangle and then press select right away to bring up the map and warp to the new sector for the first time. And that kind of confuses the game. The game essentially is trying to load multiple things at the same time. The game starts playing this cutscene and it thinks like, you know, after this I'm gonna load the great clock and take you there. But it ends up loading the planet instead afterwards, as you'll see in just a second. Um, there. So instead of taking me to play as Clank, it's just loading that planet, right? Um, I don't actually want to be on the planet, so I'm just going to leave the planet right away and warp to the sector again. But because I already tried to warp to the sector once, the game thinks that I've already left sector one once, so it thinks I've already done the Clank section. So now when I warp to the sector again after leaving, it's, it's going to play another cutscene because I'll... Hold on, let me do something really quick, and then I'll explain it. So... So I leave, the sector for, I leave sector one for the first time. So it's like, okay, cool, you're already out of sector one. So now when I try and go there, um, I'll, I'll be arriving in sector two for the first time. Um, so the game will think that I just finished playing as Clank. So it'll go, oh, I guess you just finished playing as Clank, so we're going to play the cutscene that plays at the end of the Clank section, and then I'll be in the sector. So the net result of this is that there's like a lot of loading screens and cutscenes in a row, unfortunately. But it skips like... 30 minutes of gameplay or something crazy like that. It skips basically every time you'd have to play as Clank um, between the, the Ratchet gameplay. So yeah, and it's really easy to do that. Um, that trick is a little weird because it depends a bit on loading times. Sometimes if your PS3 loads too quickly, it doesn't work. So I know like other runners have had issues with this if they have um, SSDs in their PS3 which is a solid state drive. It's like a faster hard drive. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Um, that's why I wanted to bring my own system for this, just so that I knew it worked on this system. Um, it's kind of weird the way that trick works. It has to do with um, the fact that Planet Quantos, when you first arrive there at the very beginning of the game, uh, it plays the cutscene there, right? So Quantos starts with the cutscene, and Quantos is the only planet you can do that glitch on. So in the future, I'm going to go back there to use that glitch again um, to skip more Clank gameplay. But the re we think that the reason it only works with Quantos is because it starts with a cutscene. So because the game is like loading a cutscene and then trying to load that planet, it thinks that the cutscene, like the HD cutscene, like this one, was the cutscene that was supposed to be played before the planet. And so it ends up taking you to the planet instead. It's kind of complicated, but the net result is just you try to load two things at once, and it skips. It skips uh, all the Clank gameplay. Do you have info on how that was figured out? Red, the the other runner I mentioned before, um, the original runner of this game, found it at one point. Um, I'm not sure how he found it, but recently we've done a lot of looking into other ways we could exploit that same trick, and we found that for New Game Plus runs. Um, the way New Game Plus works in this is like, 
you can enter challenge mode at any point on a run that's already like completed the game. And so you can use that to, you can use that during any loading, scene, loading screen essentially. So um, we tried starting challenge, like starting new game plus runs from a bunch of different places. And unfortunately it didn't really lead to much, but you were, if you did it with Planet Quantos, you could start a file there. Um, so now in New Game Plus, you can essentially start from Quantos and skip the very first Clank section. There was a lead that we had on another planet way later in the run, but the problem is when you use that glitch to start a challenge mode file, you don't have any of the gadgets. You have all your weapons, but in this game, the weapons aren't used for any tricks, only the gadgets, which are things like the swing shot, the hover boots, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. You don't have any of those, and not having the hover boots in particular makes it impossible to complete certain parts of this game. So that ended up not working, unfortunately. But there's, there's potential for something much more broken there one day. Quark, come in. So we're on planet Molinoth now. Um, this planet has a bunch of small tricks in a row. So this is the first one. Um, I can jump off of that thing to grab this ledge, which is a faster way of getting up here than walking around the way you're intended to. Um, I'm going to jump on top of this spring without lowering it like you're intended to. That's a really minor one. And then I'm going to get some more zony here in just a second. I'm going to get one right now. And then I'm going to backtrack a bit. So I'm going to grab that guy. Um, and then I'm going to backtrack because there's a faster way to get up on top of this rock that I need to get to than um, going the intended way. So I'm going to use this rock. This is probably the hardest trick on Molinos, so hopefully it goes well. OK, good. Uh, you can get up there. And it skips a rail section, essentially. Now this guy's going to open the next area here for us, which is called the hollow. Um, but he's a kind of on a timer, so we can use this time to collect some bolts that we're going to need to buy stuff later in the game. So while he's making his way over there slowly, I'm just going to collect a couple bolts. Why? Yeah. What do you do? Not doing this very effectively, but it doesn't matter too much. With the current route for any percent, uh, your bolt count isn't that tight. All right. So that thing I just grabbed is called a battery bot. And what you're supposed to do in the hollow is a bunch of puzzles involving bringing those to the right places to turn on different machines and stuff. But we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to skip the whole thing. Um, with an out-of-bounds trick here. So one of the th things you're supposed to do in this area over here is grab this battery bot and jump off of this spring and throw the battery bot into a thing up here. But instead, I'm just going to land on top of that, grab this ledge that's there for some reason, and now I'm out of bounds. And there's conveniently collision on like all of this stuff out of bounds over here. I'm not supposed to fall there, um, so I'm going to have to do that again. But um, yeah, you can just get out of bounds up there and walk essentially right to the end of the level. All right, so let's, let's not mess that up this time. Like that. And then from this, you can just jump to this spring over here, and that's the end of the hollow. All right, so there's, um, I guess I'll talk about this. There's a trick that can happen here randomly. We don't know what causes it to happen, and it's incredibly rare. Um, I think it's only happened to me, and I've only had it happen maybe 15 to 20 times ever. OK, I didn't get it. Basically, this rail section that I'm on, there's a thing called fast rails, where sometimes when you start this rail section, you're moving at like double the normal speed. And it saves about 25 seconds if you get it, um, and we don't know why it happens. So if you're like a glitch hunter and you want to you wanna help out this game, that would be like probably the most important thing to find out right now. I didn't get it right now, so this is like the normal speed. Um, if you do get it, it's very noticeable. Like you move a lot faster. And the dialogue kind of like gets cut off at certain points because of how quickly you're moving. Um, but this is just an auto-scroller, so this would be another good time for donations. I'm kind of just following him for a minute here. Sounds good. 
We have a $10 donation from WEDC 517. That's WED. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, from WED C 517. There we go. Who <laughs> says, it's been a joy to go back and forth with the Kraken Time community to keep bringing these games down all these years. Keep up the good work, Lombax. And when's AGB? <laughs> Uh, AGB is all gold bolts, which is one of the longer categories for this game. Uh, one of the ones that WED specializes in. Um, <laughs> I might run it eventually, we'll see. <laughs> okay, so we skipped over all the plot stuff here. We were chasing this guy named Azimuth. He didn't like us very much. I just skipped a cutscene and now he, he loves us. In fact, he's like our best friend and he just gave us some hover boots and we're gonna use those and just get out of here as quickly as possible. So, the hover boots are really broken in this game. Um, the run picks up a lot from this point on after you get them. We're gonna immediately use them to do a skip right here called a double jump, which is kind of hard to explain. It's not just a normal double jump, um, but you can use it to gain extra height like that and get out of areas you're not supposed to. So doing that skipped... Um, so right now I'm doing this thing where I'm collecting flares, right? There was another course like this I was supposed to do beforehand, but I jumped out of that area and skipped it. Uh, this one I have to complete, however. Another weird thing you'll notice here in just a second is if I hold R2 and L1 at the same time, Ratchet does this weird, like, floating, falling thing. I really have no idea why that happens, um, but it's a pretty fast way of moving around when you're in the air. I think it's a glitch having to do with shooter controls with the hover boots. Um, so that's pretty much all of Malinoth. Um, this level is designed in a really cool way where once you have the hover boots, you can go backwards through the level really quickly to get back to where your ship is. And you basically just follow the zoni in front of us. So grabbing this zoni is going to be our fourth zoni. And since we skipped the, the upgrade you're supposed to get for getting three zoni, which repairs your ship, we're going to get that upgrade now, which is kind of weird, but it doesn't... We're going to basically get an upgrade that doesn't do anything. Um, and so you might be wondering, like, what are zoni for? Like, why haven't I really talked about that? So what zoni do is they upgrade your ship. And you're supposed to need these upgrades to get past certain areas, but you can skip almost all of that um, with a trick I'm going to do in just a minute to get to the next planet. Um, oh, actually, it didn't give me the upgrade. That's weird. Normally it does, but for some reason it skipped that animation this time. So the next planet we're going to is, I wish I forget the name. I think the planet's called Terachnos. Um, it's where Axiom City is. And... You're supposed to have to have six zoni to get to this planet. Because when you get your six zoni, you get an upgrade for your ship called a booster that makes it so you can move a lot faster and go through this certain barrier, right? But we don't have six zoni yet, so we're gonna do something a little different. We are eventually gonna get we're gonna end the game with seven zoni, because it is worth getting it is worth getting the booster later because of how much time you spend in your ship in space. It ends up being faster overall to, to get it, just getting two extra zoni, or three extra zoni, I guess. Um, but for now, we don't have it, so we're going to do a trick called a barrier skip. So if you see those satellites around the purple planet in front of me, those are the barrier that's supposed to be preventing us from getting there, that we're supposed to need the booster to get past. But instead, we're just going to go around it. Um, so this wall to my left, this hexagon wall, you're not supposed to be able to go through it. But if you roll towards it and hold a certain angle on the left control stick at the same time, you can just clip through it. And the way, so I'm out of bounds in space right now. And the way this works is if I ever turn the ship to face out of bounds while I'm out of bounds, then I'll get teleported back inbound. So I'm kind of keeping it facing inbounds until I get to the right spot. And I'm going to move here, turn, and teleport back inbounds on the other side of the barrier so I can land on the planet. Um, you do that two more times in the run. That one's the hardest time you do it, the other two times are pretty easy. Um, that one's not too bad either, once you know the right spot to move to. So yeah, uh, that's why we don't need Zoni. Um, we are going to get two more Zoni on this planet, though, because we want the booster upgrade for later in the run. So right, right off the bat, I'm going to... Uh, well, I'm going to buy another weapon called Mr. Zircon, which is a fan favorite and is actually very good in the speed run. And then I'm going to get this zoni that's in front of me, which I'm not supposed to be able to get yet, but we're going to do something to get in front of him. 
So you can actually use the swing shot from down here to get up here, and now I'm in front of that zony, and I can grab him before he gets to me. What kind of adjustment? So that's our fifth zony. We're going to get one more in just a minute. This is another planet where um, the goal is essentially like get from point A to point B, just get through it as quickly as possible. And there is a faster way to do this that was recently found by Mobius, um, but it is by far the hardest trick in the run, and you would have to skip getting the second zoni here that I'm going to get soon. So in any percent, it maybe saves about 10 seconds. In New Game Plus, it's much more worth it, but uh, I haven't learned it yet well enough. But maybe, maybe at another, another event that can be shown off. All right, so I'm about to do some fighting using that weapon I just bought, Mr. Zircon. So Mr. Zircon kind of just automatically helps you fight, and he ends up being really good for certain fights later in the run. Let's not die here. Okay. Uh, there we go. So normally I would just leave by going through that thing in front of me, but I'm going to grab this battery bot over here because I need it to get my last zoni. So I bring this battery bot up here, and it lowers that, which allows me to get this guy. So now I have all the zoni I need for the run. So we don't have to worry about them anymore. We're going to get given one for free at a later point, but we don't have to intentionally collect any more of them. So now we have um, the two big tricks on this planet back to back. One of the tricks is to get into Pollux Industries early, and the other one is to completely skip Pollux Industries. Um, so this one involves, well, there's kind of a, it's kind of a multi-step process. So first I'm going to not slide down the front of that sign, hopefully. Do that, grab this ledge up here. And from here I can jump to this other ring, which I'm not supposed to be able to get to until I've done a lot more fighting. Um, and in this ring, I can jump over to this, get onto this uh, out-of-bounds platform up here, and uh, climb up this really convenient sign to gain some height. Four. From here, I'm going to do another double jump onto this ramp. And we're in Pollux Industries now. That skips about five plus minutes of fighting, so that's a really big skip. Um, this next skip is <laughs> pretty similar. This skips five to ten minutes of gameplay. You can grab this ledge like this and then jump to this one and clip out of bounds, and you're just above Pollux Industries now. And the beginning of this level is very close to the end of it if you're out of bounds. So from here, you can land on this thing, jump through, and this, this is the last room of Pollux Industries. So that skips all of that, too. And now we're uh, basically just doing some more fighting. Um, we're at the boss now. The boss is a very long, it's a very long involved process to beat this boss. Um, and there's a couple tricks during the fight, but for the next couple minutes, there's not going to be too much going on. So this is another good time for donations if you have any. Sounds good. We've got a $25 donation from JX Meister, who says, first time donating to GDQ. Absolutely love the runs. And best of luck to Lombax. You got this. So I can um, use a lot of, it's very hard to dodge these lasers, as you can see. Um, this boss is kind of like the halfway point in the game, because this is the end of Sector 2. Um, and they kind of wanted it to be this big, like, epic fight, which is why it takes a long time. But it's, it's really easy. Like, I'm, I'm not doing any input. The lasers just miss you if you stand in the right spot. Um, so it's, it's a lot less of a climax than I think they wanted it to be, unfortunately. We're going to do kind of more of the same once we get onto the boss. Um, so right now I'm just kind of waiting. Like this, this is another auto scroller where I just have to dodge lasers for a while. Um, there are three panels that I'm kind of walking around on, and you have to take them off like one at a time. So. They're only vulnerable at certain times. So you kind of just have to wait for the lasers to like do their thing, and then then you have an opportunity. It should be this one. Yeah. Go for it. 
So that's number one. And then we just do that like two more times. Um, and we're still not actually fighting the boss yet, but we're, we're on it. The boss is like this ship thing above us. But we'll be there soon. How about time for another donation? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> we have $20 from Turtles for Vaughn, who says the Ratchet and Clank run is so much fun, and Law Max's commentary is great. Thanks. I wish the run was great, but uh, <laughs> I'll settle great. for that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it gets easier and easier too. Like now there's only one of those things left. And you can also get hit five times without dying. So I could just take some damage for fun if I feel like it. It also doesn't really matter too much because after I break this third one off, um, I'm gonna die intentionally because of an upcoming trick that won't work if I haven't died once. Um, I'm gonna do it and then get to the part where it's relevant and explain it. So this next sequence is a little weird. So after I break this, it's gonna launch me off of here. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump off to the right and, and die. <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, and so now I'm gonna do a trick called an SI jump or a slope intercept jump. This is in almost every Ratchet and Clank game. It might be in literally all of them. This is a really common trick in this series which is uh, you can kind of like, there are certain things you can kind of like do this with and kind of get up past areas you're not supposed to be able to by jumping on very specific parts of certain ledges. And there happens to be one there that allows me to get up here. And I'm skipping some more fighting and jumping on top of the boss. And this is where you actually fight him. Before you fight him, you have to break these three container things. Um, and for some reason, if you don't die once before doing this, these things are just indestructible. It has something to do with how the triggers are programmed in this game. So you have to die once before coming up here, otherwise you can't break those. Um, so now we're going to fight the boss, which basically consists of pull out a Mr. Zircon and run in circles throwing bombs at him until he dies. And then we'll be done with Axiom City. That's that. Um, yeah. So now we're done with Sector 2. Um, so once I leave and I'm back in space, I'm going to have the coordinates to go to Sector 3. But if I just go there, I'll have to switch off and play as Clank, right? So I'm going to go back to Sector 1 so that I can use Planet Quantos to do that same trick again to skip playing as Clank. Um, so you do this three times in the run. You do it between each of the sectors, right? So you do it between Sector 1 and 2, between 2 and 3, between 3 and 4. And each time you do it, there's about like five minutes of basically downtime without much in, in terms of player input, which is, um, you know, not ideal for a speed run, but it's an exercise in patience. Um, also in a second, once I'm in, the, in sector one, you'll see how much faster I move now that I have the booster, since I have six zoni. So I'm, when I arrive there, I'm gonna turn around so I can go towards the planet I wanna go to. And when you're moving with the booster, you still kind of do the thing where you roll and go forward at the same time. You just do it while holding R2 and the angle's a little different, but you're still getting the speed from rolling and going forward at the same time. And it looks look kind of like this. If you'll notice the ship is kind of on the right side of the screen instead of in the middle, because I'm rolling like that. So I'm doing the same trick, triangle and then select. And then you mash circle to skip this cutscene, and then now it's taking me, in theory, to play as Clank after this section, but it's actually gonna load the planet instead. Um, so yeah, we have more time for donations if there are any. Sure thing. We've got a $5 donation from One With Logic. He says, first time watching GDQ. Really fun watching the Silent Hill 2 run and can't wait to see more. We've also got a $5 donation from Psychosis. Who says, hey Lombax. So great to see a future series game at GDQ. Yeah. <laughs> Always awesome to see some RIC community representation. BT Dubs, you should run Tools of Destruction. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. That's an earlier game in the future series. Psychosis um, helped with some of the early routing and stuff for this game as well. He's been around for a long time. 
Yeah, I don't know about tools of destruction. <laughs> Maybe one day. Oh, also a quick reminder, guys. Hey, did you know that Turok could be played at 100%? <laughs> I'm sure I haven't said it enough. But we're only a little over $600 away from hitting that. And we've got another, however long the rest of the run is, another hour. Um, so make sure, guys, you get your donations in if you would like to see Turok at 100%. I believe. I believe. So yeah, um, this is the f first Future Series game that's been run at a GDQ event, to my knowledge, which is pretty cool. Um, there are four games in the series, so just putting that out there for anyone who's listening. You have a lot to choose from. So yeah, um, so now it's loading the planet again, same as before. I'm going to arrive and immediately leave and then warp to the sector that I want to go to again. And it'll play another cutscene, and then we'll be there. Um, this time it's a little different because after I get there, there's a boss fight that you do in space, like you fight another ship. Um, and that fight is part of the reason why you have to get the booster by this point, because that fight is really slow and not fun to do if you don't have the booster upgrade for the ship. So like for anyone who might be wondering, like, why do you get those two zoning on? the two zoni on Axiom, like maybe you could get one later on a later planet that might be faster. You need to have six zoni like by this point in the run. Um, so when you're playing this game casually, the difficulty kind of ramps up in each sector. Like sector one's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. It's like an intro area. Sector two is like a little more challenging. Three is more challenging than, than two. Four is more challenging than three. And the speedrun is actually kind of the same way. Um, the hardest chunk of this run is the second half of sector three into the first half of sector four. Um, sector three is a lot more involved than the two we've done so far. It has four locations instead of two. Um, so we're going to do this boss fight in space, and then we have four different planets um, with a lot of out-of-bounds and fighting and all that kind of good stuff. So now we're going to fight the boss Libra. This is probably the heaviest RNG point in the run, um, because as you're fighting this boss, there are these pink ships that spawn. And so the idea is um, you have to, so you can do like a third of her health. You can damage her up to, like till she's down to two thirds of her health. And then she becomes invulnerable, and you have to kill like 10 ships, like now. Um, and then you can do the next third, and then you have to kill 15 more, and then you can do the last third. And these ships move around very randomly. They're very hard to, not very hard, but it's, it's, it can be frustrating to get them to go where you want them to. They also give you random power-ups. So I just got two times bolts, which is the worst possible power-up. That doesn't do anything, because we don't care about our bolts level. We, we know we're going to get enough for what we need. Um, I got rapid fire, which is one of the good ones. The ones I want are rapid fire and double damage, because those just allow me to do more damage and beat the boss faster. Um, the other ones you can get, sometimes you can get health refills, which aren't super useful unless you get really low on health, which you don't really need to do. You can also get temporary invulnerability, which isn't that great either, but that one's also pretty rare. Um, if you do get that one, you can be like really aggressive and get like right up next to the boss, which can be good. Looks like I got pretty medium RNG there. I got one rapid fire, I think, which is about average. Um, but if you get a lot of the good power-ups, this fight can go much faster. And it's funny, because this is like the heaviest RNG part of the run, and it's followed by a level that's pure execution. So the, the next planet is the shortest planet. You spend the least amount of time there, mostly because the whole planet is just one big out-of-bounds sequence. Um, and there's no fighting at all, so it's all just doing it correctly. So on this planet, um, there's kind of a lot of stuff that happens quickly, so it's, it's hard to explain. The first thing I'm going to do, as soon as I land, I'm going to jump into a wall, and that's going to trigger a cutscene that I'm not supposed to trigger till later, because they made the collision for like triggering this cutscene too big, so you can jump into this, like, 
into a wall, basically, and trigger a cutscene that's not supposed to happen until way later in the level. And that kind of puts things in a weird state where you can do a bunch of stuff out of order and skip a lot of this planet. So this is what I mean. I'm just jumping into this corner, and then a cutscene's triggering. And so there's, there's a lot more to this level that you don't see. There's a whole valley area down outside that I'm never going to go to. And there's a whole area with caves um, that I'm never going to go into. I'm just going to come over here, jump off of this thing, and climb up this thing using some SI jumps. And from up here, I can grab a certain part of the roof, like that, to clip through. And the room right in front of me is the room I want to end up in, but for the cut, for the for that room to for that room's event to trigger, I need to have Azimuth with me, and I left him behind. So I'm going to come across over here so I can get a checkpoint, and then intentionally die and respawn with Azimuth with me, and then go back to that room. I mean, I, I'm using two double jumps to get across this gap, so I can talk a little bit right now about what double jumps are. Um, they're a little bit difficult to explain. But I'm not just jumping twice. Um, it has to do with the way you position the stick and how you time the jumps. But essentially, I'm using the, oh, that wasn't supposed to hit me. I'm using the uh, hover boots to get further than I'm supposed to because that's a good way to explain this. So like, when you're boosting forward with the hover boots and you, do, and you just press X or L1 to jump, you, um, you do like a certain kind of jump that you can't double jump out of. So if you return the stick to a neutral position before doing that, you can kind of like cheat the system and like get, a, get the ability to do a double jump anyways while still gaining some of the, the distance. Right now there are invisible people talking because I did everything out of order and the game's confused. So now I'm getting an item that I'm gonna need later. I could have left as soon as I finished that other area, but I have to come over here and get this item called the Omni Soaker because um, there's a planet I'm gonna go to soon that there is no way to beat currently that we know of without the Omni Soaker. Um, and I think we've narrowed it, we've gotten it down to only two required uses of the Omni Soaker. If we can get it down to zero, then we could skip having to come get that, and that would save a lot of time. Um, right now, I'm just I'm doing a save load, so I'm just going to be placed right back next to my ship, and then we're going to leave. Um, so that was Krell Canyon. Next, we're going to go to Battleplex, which is, there's no skips or tricks on this planet. This planet's a bunch of fighting. If you've played other Ratchet and Clank games, this is like the arena of this planet, where you just, you fight a bunch of enemies, and that's kind of the, the thing there. There actually, I, I kind of lied. There is one trick you do. Um, you can one cycle the boss after getting a certain upgrade. I'll explain how that works when I get there. Um, but yeah, so right now I'm just leaving the planet. I'm going to be back in space, and then I'm going to fly to Battleplex and start fighting a bunch of enemies. How about a quick donation? Yeah, go for it. Okay, great. <laughs> we have a $250 donation from Something Paradoxical. Yeah. <laughs> Who says, let meet the Turok donation incentive. I agree, we should do that. <laughs> We're getting pretty close now, guys. Getting pretty close. I mean, we also have a $10 donation from Shadow Dart, who I think agrees with something paradoxical because they say, take my money for 100% dinosaurs. Nice. You can keep going if there's more. I can certainly do that. Uh, just want to also remind you guys, well, at this point, we are only, that looks like, $370 away from our Turok 100%, so we really are getting close to that. We also have the Chippendale Chipmunk, Chipmunk Choice. So if you guys want to, oh my gosh, the race is so close, <laughs> to decide whether to play as Dale or as Chip, and they are one penny apart right now. <laughs> one penny. <laughs> Dale is winning by a penny. So get those donations in for that if you would like to see one chipmunk versus the other. All right, so this is the first challenge. This challenge is just beat five waves of enemies as quickly as possible. 
Um, you're gonna see me trying to kill them kind of as they're spawning, because I know where some of the waves are gonna spawn. Um, and this area is where Mr. Zircon is like really good, because um, you can just pull him out. And a lot of these enemies you can kill in just a couple shots. There's sometimes some of them even just one. So he's um, this area is the main reason why you buy him. He's useful elsewhere, but this area is what makes him so valuable. Oh, I missed a guy. I missed two guys. <laughs> that wasn't very good. So that's the first challenge. The second one's basically gonna be the same thing, except um, there are stage hazards that can work for or against me, because they hurt enemies, but they also hurt me. And there's only one box to refill my ammo, which is in the middle, which is not the most convenient thing in the world. So usually what I try to do is just kind of stay towards the middle, and just whenever there's downtime between the waves, uh, refill my ammo. So yeah, so these fire things and saw things, sometimes they'll hit the enemies. Um, but you actually also have to pay a lot of attention to them yourself. Um, you might be thinking like, oh, we're on casual difficulty, like it doesn't really matter. But in this game, you're expected to buy armor upgrades. And you're also, whenever you, so Ratchet can level up himself by killing enough enemies. Um, and that gives him more health. But we've skipped like almost all the fighting in this game. So we're really under leveled and we have no armor upgrades. So there's enemies here that can kill us in like two hits, um, which shouldn't be an issue, but it's just something you kind of have to like be aware of when you're doing these challenges. The third challenge is pretty unique. Um, we don't have any weapons, and the only way we can so what we have to do to beat it is to kill 10 enemies only using the bombs they throw at us. Um, so you'll see what I mean by that in a second. So at first there's only gonna be one guy. So I'm gonna grab his first bomb and then I'm gonna wait for him to throw another one. Then I'm gonna kill the next guy that spawns right away. And now they'll start spawning two at a time. Um, which is better, because I have more opportunities to get bombs. Eventually, they're going to start spawning with shields, which you have to pull off before, um, you, before you can uh, hit them. So now they're going to start spawning with shields that I have to pull off, but kind of the same thing still. Sometimes you can get them to shoot each other by lining them up like this. Uh, that didn't work. That was weird. I don't know where that bomb went. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that one's pretty straightforward. The best thing about this challenge is that we're getting an upgrade now for the bomb glove, which was the weapon we bought earlier. And this upgrade makes it way, way more powerful. So as soon as I start the next challenge, I'm going to pause to equip this upgrade. And um, this upgrade is, you might not notice it if you're just watching this for the first time, but it makes the, the weapon a lot stronger, enough so that we'll be able to one cycle the boss, as I was mentioning earlier. This could be going better. Let's need some of these. Both, good. All right, 
There's a thing that can happen here called shield glitch. OK, I didn't get it. Sometimes it like won't let you pull off their, their shields, and it's really annoying, but it didn't happen. So we're good. All right. So then the last challenge is um, you fight three waves of enemies with Quark helping you, because the whole reason we came here in the story was to save him. And then we fight a boss. Um, so hopefully we get the one cycle. Um, See how it goes. Basically, the way you do the one cycle is you have to, you need to make sure you have full ammo. So I'm going to be pretty careful about like getting ammo during these fights because you need basically all of your bombs to do the one cycle. Um, you have to stand in a certain spot and hope that he cooperates with you and gets hit in the right places, essentially. Um, so it's kind of dependent on like which hit boxes of his, or I guess it would be hurt boxes of his, your bombs hit. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can do this. I think we got it. Yep. Cool. So that's the one cycle. Normally, he has three parts to, to the boss, but you can beat him in, in just one. So conveniently, beating this challenge gives us another weapon that's really good um, that we just get for free, which is part of why we don't um, have to buy too much, because the negotiator is just a really good weapon. It's like this game's rocket launcher, and you just get it for free in the normal story part of the game. So I'm doing another save load. This one is actually faster in real time as well as in game time, because it saves you having to walk all the way back out to your, where your ship is in the Battleplex. And your ship kind of moves out really slowly, so it actually takes a really long time to get back to your ship. But if you save load, it's just there right away, and you can just leave. Um, so this is the least painful of those by far. And this is also the last one in the run. Yeah, so we can just leave right away. Um, so after this, we're going to go to Tumli. So Tumli into Vorslan 2 is where I would say the run starts to reach its like hardest part. Um, Tumli's not too bad, but it has a couple things that can, that can eat up a lot of time if they don't go well. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, the first thing that's going to come up is we're going to do the second barrier skip. So this is the trick uh, from before where we can go around one of the barriers. We're supposed to have, like I don't know, way, way more zoning than we do right now. Um, to get past that barrier, we need an upgrade called the Tether, um, which we're never going to get. So we're just going to clip out of bounds and go around it again. Like that. Oh, there we go. And then this one, we don't have to do the teleporting back in. We can actually just fly right up to it and land on it. So Toomley is going to start with another double jump. Um, the first thing you do on Toomley is you double jump off of your ship to get to a platform that's like a lot later in the level. Um, there's a sort of difficult sequence at the beginning of this. Um, it's going well in practice, so hopefully it goes well now. Um, but yeah, Toomley has a lot more out of bounds stuff and sequence breaks and that kind of thing. Well, not a lot of out of bounds, but it has a lot of like clipping through stuff or getting jumping to places you're not supposed to, that kind of thing. The first part of it is uh, the hardest. So hopefully we get this first sequence on the first try. So I'm going to jump off of the like fin of this ship. And eh, that might not make it. Nope, we're good. OK. Camera did not cooperate with me there, but we made it work. Cool. And then we're going to skip this spring. We're just going to jump over here to this one. We're kind of like going through the level backwards right now. OK. So now we have to do two clips. Um, if you get these first try, they're easy, quick, but sometimes they're a little finicky. We'll see how they go. Um, 
Is this the first one? OK, that was good. I have to come down here and get a checkpoint. Um, this game is really picky with its checkpoints. If you do things out of order, sometimes you can soft block. OK, and that was the second one. Good, so both clips were first try. Come on, there we go, <laughs> uh, which is good. And now we're going to learn how to plant seeds. So get excited for that. Um, yeah, so this guy, <laughs> this guy's, oh, that's weird. OK, there we go. So this guy's going to tell us how to plant these, uh, these purple seeds that we're going to see later. And we actually can't plant them unless we talk to him. Um, even though the only, all you have to do is just pick them up with the wrench and throw them. But we have to sit through this, this dialogue to do that. It's kind of funny, though. So I'm sure Twitch chat will enjoy some of what he's about to tell you. There are two more planters around here. If you want to give it a try. Praise no. What? Did I not exit? That's weird. Thought I hit exit. So I'm intentionally throwing my wrench against those the tree there so that it bounces back to me and I pick up the seeds faster. And I'm gonna grab that one. And those are the three seeds. Um, and the reason you do this. Um, in the game, we're like in the past right now, and we're going to go back into the future, and those vines will have like grown so we can use them to our advantage. But we don't actually need to do that, because we can just do this jump right here, and grab this ledge. You're not supposed to be able to do that, but you can. Um, that's another one of those jumps where you just delay your jump longer than it feels like you're supposed to be able to. I'm coming over here to get a checkpoint. Um, if I don't get that checkpoint before doing what I'm about to do, the game will soft lock. Uh-oh. Uh, I might not have realized I got it. That's a problem. All right, I'm going to have to reload. That's weird. I'm pretty sure I got the checkpoint, so I don't know what's going on. Hopefully, uh, I'm not too far back. If you kill that, that robot um, and then break the barrier without getting that checkpoint over there, then the game will, um, like, what I was supposed to do is pull off, pull a switch that essentially like gets rid of the, it like frees the prisoner, the prisoners, right? Okay, it looks like I have to do all of Tomb Lee again. That's kind of a weird mistake. I don't know why that happened. It looks like I got the checkpoint, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Hopefully, it doesn't happen again. We'll we'll do this quickly. Yeah. Can throw in a donation? For yeah, you? go ahead. All right. We have a $25 donation from Jay Razzi, who says, Hey, Lombax, congrats on your GDQ debut. Glad I tuned in for your great commentary and a sweet game. Keep it up. Thanks, dude. Uh, why is the bridge already? Oh, no. Um, the bridge is already down. What does that mean? Um, I don't know. That could be really bad. The game's in a state that I'm not familiar with right now, so I kind of have to figure out what's going on. I'm just going to go through it in order again. And This is what can happen with this clip if it doesn't go well the first time. There we go. So that's already happened. OK. So if I go back here, so do I have to plant the? Yeah, I have to plant the seeds again. OK, that's where we're at. I don't know why it's saved here, but yeah, sometimes this game gets confused when you do things out of order. It's very picky with its triggers. Um, all right. So the seeds have definitely been planted. Let's try this again. 
Should make it. Okay. So let's make very certain that we get this checkpoint this time. Okay, I see the symbol. I got the checkpoint. Killed the guy. Okay, there we go. I don't know why that didn't happen the other time. Um, because I'm pretty certain, I'm gonna have to watch the VOD of this, but I'm pretty certain that I got the checkpoint. So, you know, marathon, excuses, that whole thing. It happens, man. Yeah. <laughs> no. That double jump saves like one second if you get it. And it wastes like 10 if you miss it. How about a quick donation? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, because we have $100 coming in from Plasma Saint, who says $100 for a Turok 100%. <laughs> that means we are less, less than $250 away. And we have the rest of this run to meet that goal, guys. So we are very close. We are very close. Yeah, at this rate, you'll have plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. So I'm coming back here to get some ammo. Um, I'm gonna take advantage of the thing where, like, the thing I mentioned before, where when a weapon levels up, its ammo gets refilled. So I'm gonna kill this guy, and then I'm gonna have the rocket launcher level up off of killing this guy. Um, Cause I'm gonna wanna use it again in a second. Let's kill these guys. He'll get hit. There we go. And that is Tomb Lee. It's two Tomb Lees, in fact, because I had to do most of it again. <laughs> so now we're going to Vorsalon 2. Um, so this is the second time we're gonna visit Vorsalon's ship. Um, you can actually visit, a th visit it again a third time post game, but uh, obviously we don't need to do that in this category. Um, Vorsalon 2 is a lot different. This is where we're gonna see gravity ramps really exploited in a couple different ways. Um, so the whole beginning of this area is like kind of a big out of bounds sequence break. We're gonna jump over a room that has a boss fight in it. So yeah, hopefully it goes well. Because we don't want to, we don't want to fight that boss. So essentially, what's going to happen is um, I'm going to run through this entrance way. I'm going to jump on top of a couple of light structures to get on top of one that clips me out of bounds. I'm going to do a double jump to get far enough to another area to clip me back, technically in bounds, but in an area that you're never allowed to get to in normal gameplay. Or well, you get there, but you don't get there in this state. And then I'm going to do a trick called a grab ramp clip which is essentially what it sounds like. You jump at a gravity ramp at a certain angle and you clip through it and because your gravity has changed, you get launched really far and really high into the air and then from there you can fly over the boss fight. So hopefully all of that works out exactly as I just described it. So now we're back inbounds, and we're gonna, hopefully my setup for this will cooperate with me, and we'll get this quickly. There we go. So now we're way up here. The boss fight is uh, in the room below us that we're flying over. Um, so we skipped fighting a boss, which is gonna leave some stuff in this area in a weird state. 
All right, that was kind of low. So let's not do, there's a trick you can do there, but it involves taking damage, so I'm gonna not do it. Um, you can boost jump up, up this gravity ramp to get up it faster, but it involves breaking those boxes and taking damage, and since I'm at one, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna play this super safe because I don't want to get hurt here. And now I'm gonna intentionally die, so I'm gonna back into one of these lasers. There's a lot of intentional death in this level um, to just uh, prevent some backtracking. What I'm doing right now is breaking these three generators. So I just broke the first one. The second one's in this room. Collect some bolts on the way in and on the way out. So I'm gonna get all the bolts in this room too. Grab these, and then I'm going to intentionally die again to avoid backtracking out of that room. Got time for a quick donation? Uh, yeah, go ahead. We have another anonymous $250 donation. <laughs> they say, to a rock! <laughs> it's a lot of uh, exclamation points. Which means that we have hit our Turok 100% goal. <laughs> Pulling through, you guys. Thank you so much, everyone. That's going to be a fun run. So we freed Azimuth, which was the whole point of coming here. Um, now we're going to run back through the room we skipped earlier. This room is in a really weird state right now because we skipped a boss fight in here. So it's a little confused. Right now, I'm killing enemies that are spawning above me. Just trust me, it's happening. Um, and then in a second here, this door's gonna open. Oh, we're in air lombax, apparently. Um, so I'm gonna buy an, a weapon I need for later in the game here. This is called the Groovatron. It's a really broken weapon. Um, I'll talk about it later in the run when I use it. And, okay. Come on, Azimuth. Come with me. Need to kill this guy. Okay, let's go, bud. So sometimes Azimuth doesn't make it through the door, but he did this time. Um, if he doesn't make it through, there's another intentional death I would do later to have him respawn, but I'm gonna not have to do that this time because he, he made it. He caught up. So now we're gonna use this turret and kill some stuff. And then head out of here in just a second. Let me know when I can throw some more donations. This is a great time for donations. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> we have a $100 donation from Splintered Mind. <laughs> and they say, if wanting more dinosaurs is wrong, then baby, I don't want to be right. <laughs> we also have a $150 donation from Eli122. Look at all these awesome donations coming in. It says, good luck and have fun to all the runners. So we just finished Sector 4, sorry, Sector 3. Um, so we're going to do the same trick as before, go back to Sector 1 so we can skip the Clank gameplay between the two sectors for Sector 4. Uh, right now, I have Ratchet and Azimuth are having a conversation, and you don't gain the ability to go to Sector 4 until this conversation ends. So I just have to hang out here for a second until they stop talking. Well, it's not much, but it's our only lead. Upload them to my ship and I'll meet you there. Ratchet out. All right. I mean, this is pretty much exactly the same as the other two times I did it. I go there, I do the trick with Quantos, um, and it skips the Clank gameplay. The only difference this time is one of the cutscenes is, is skippable, um, but the other one's really long still, so they kind of make up for it. Um, after this, we'll be in Sector 4. Sector 4 is the hardest, well, I don't know if I would say hardest, but the, 
there's a sequence in, at the end, or at the beginning of sector four, in the first place you go in sector four, that kills a lot of runs. Um, you basically have to do something similar to door clip that I did in Vorslan 1, but it's a bit harder this time. You have to jump off of a different type of enemy. Um, I'll explain that a bit more when I get there. But uh, in Sector 4, there's a, lot of, there's a lot more worry of being killed by enemies. So, what is next on our um, because like I said, even though we're on the lowest difficulty, our health and armor are really low or non-existent. Um, so there's a lot of enemies in the next couple planets that can kill us in like two hits, um, which makes certain things more challenging, particularly a planet called uh, Gimlik Valley that we'll be at in 15-ish minutes, maybe a little more than that. How about a few more donations? Yeah, go for it. OK. <laughs> we have a $75 anonymous donation that says, let's see that Turok 100%. <laughs> we are on it. <laughs> we also have a $90 donation. I believe the name is Onesie, which is awesome. And they say, I feel like this is the most interesting stream in the whole Twitch currently, or forever. Right? GDQs are always so much fun to watch. He loved you very much, you know. He was always XJ We've got an anonymous $25 donation who says, Pump to see Bakwa running Turok, to donating to see more of it. Orientation message. So um, around when I started running this game is, a, is about the same time when Red found a lot of the big tricks with it, um, including like the clank section skips. You used to not be able to skip those, and you used to have to do all of the clank puzzles in any percent. You do them in other categories, but not in any percent or new game plus. Um, around that time, he also found the barrier skips, which were the things I did to get around the planets um, without the thing that allowed me to not collect Zoni. Um, so right around when I started, the route for the game changed dramatically, and Red kind of stopped playing. Um, so optimizing this game has been a bit difficult, but um, one of the last things he found before he stopped playing has to do with uh, the next location we're going to, which is called uh, Nefarious Space Station, or just Space Station for short. Um, and we used to kind of fight our way through this area, and we used to buy an item or a weapon called the Buzz Blades before going here. The Buzz Blades are going to be our late game weapon. We're going to use them for all of Endgame. We haven't bought them yet. Um, but because of a tr uh, some out of bounds clips he found in Space Station that skip all of the fighting, we now don't buy the Buzz Blades until after Space Station. Um, so, yeah. Uh, before I get to Space Station, the first thing I'm going to do is the third and final barrier skip. Um, and this one's actually pretty significant because, well, not, not this one, but going to Space Station right now seems a little weird because there's a planet that we're actually going to skip. There's one level um, we can skip in its entirety because it's kind of triggers for it are kind of tied to Space Station. And so you're supposed to go to it before this, but because of some of the tricks we can do, we don't need to go there at all. We can just go straight to Space Station. So that was the final barrier skip. Uh, that one's pretty straightforward. The first thing we're going to do when we get here is the trick that allows us to skip that other planet. Um, Vopedia, I believe, is its name. Um, this 
trick is based, it's just a double jump. And this was um, one of the first double jumps. This might be the first double jump that was found, or the first use of it that Red found in the run. He also found double jumps. Um, and this used to, this is kind of a, a choke point for a lot of new runners. Um, it's one of the harder double jumps in the game. This one and the Tumli one, I think, are probably the two hardest ones. So we'll see how it goes. That's not a double jump. Okay. Cool. Um, and then those two swing shot things, we can skip the first one and just jump and grab the second one, which saves a little bit of time right there. And then we're just going to run up into Nefarious Space Station. So we're supposed to do a bunch of stuff outside in this outer area, but we uh, don't have to do any of that. We can just go straight to the end. So uh, meet your new favorite character. We're going to see a bit, more of, uh, a bit more of them in a second. So right now I'm going to intentionally take some damage because I'm going to do a death abuse strat here. Uh, we're about to be in the interior of Space Station, and there's a there are some barriers you have to get past in here. And if you die once while you're in here, one of the barriers deloads for some reason. So I'm going to let these little uh, I forget what these are called, but these little things. Um, I'm going to let one of them hurt me a bit so that. In a second, I can get killed in one hit by another enemy. Alright. So, uh, enjoy this close up of Nurse Quark. She's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're about to do um, the other trick that's like door clip where we jump off the enemy. This one's a lot more unreliable. The, the way these enemies move around is a lot more random. First, I'm going to do the death abuse, so I'm just going to let one of them kill me right away. Um, and that deloads a, a barrier later, like I was saying. And now we're going to see how lucky we get. This is kind of the, the late game run killer, this trick. And that was perfect. That's a lot rarer than it, it looked. Um, so hopefully the rest of this goes well. That was about as good as that can go. The second clip. Gonna do another double jump to the last room over here. And we're still at full health, so we can actually just jump right here, and we can just go through the air vent without even killing the guys, because the collision for it's still there. So that was pretty much a perfect space station, um, which is... You know, that's nice, considering I haven't been playing super well, but uh, at least we got that. We're going to leave Quark behind for a minute. He's supposed to be in the elevator with us, but um, he'll be back soon. How about time for a donation? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. We have a $5 donation from Austin56 who says, I look forward to GDQ twice a year. Great to see another one around my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Had to donate during my favorite Ratchet and Clank game. Loving the run so far, Lombax. Awesome, thank you. Okay. So I killed those two guys because um, in a second I'm gonna have to fight all the enemies in here. So it's faster to just kill them right now. I have to do a little mini game right now where I shoot some asteroids. Um, and then we're going to fight a bunch of, a bunch of enemies.
Okay. Um, so now we're gonna use the negotiator, the rocket launcher, and the bomb glove a bit to, to do some fighting. We're also gonna use the dance glove, which was the thing I bought in the elevator on the last level. Um, what that weapon does is it makes all of the enemies stop whatever they were doing and just dance, which it's meant to be this like silly weapon, but it's actually incredibly overpowered and it works on bosses as well. Um, so it bas basically just makes the end game a lot easier. Um, certain fights in particular are like dramatically easier if you have that uh, weapon. Just getting some ammo here. Got a couple more guys. All right, so now it's time to dance. Uh, a warning, this is gonna be really loud. Okay, it's not that bad. Sometimes this sound effect on these enemies is really loud. Um, it sounds like it's not doing it right now, which is good. Didn't really warn everyone early enough, but yeah. Just missing that guy and this guy. All right. That was kind of a slow fight, but good enough. Um, and that's basically the end of Space Station. Quark's gonna join us on the elevator. And then we're gonna watch another cutscene. And then we're gonna be directly taken to Gimlik Valley. Um, which has under undergone a couple of changes recently. Uh, most notably a trick that Mobius found recently. Um, so in this, what happens on this planet, we're gonna, as soon as we get there, we're gonna buy the Buzz Blades, which is the weapon I was talking about earlier. That's basically the weapon we're gonna use to close out Endgame, and we're gonna level it up from level one to level four while we're here. Um, because getting it to level four makes the, the final three boss fights a lot faster. Um, so it's worth it to spend some extra time to make sure that the Buzz Blades get to level four specifically. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do some fighting. Um, and then there's a, a sequence that comes up here where we have to plant some more vine seeds again and do the gimmick with the portal going back and forth between the present and the future. Um, and you're supposed to plant the seeds and one of the seeds like comes through, one of the vines comes through the portal and you kind of like ride the vines around and it takes you up to this platform you couldn't get to. Um, but Mobius found a way using um, Clank so at this point in the story, Ratchet and Clank are back together. Um, and because of that, we can, we've gained some additional abilities. With Ratchet now, we can do a high jump um, using Clank's helipack. And if we do that a certain way in Hyper Strike, which is when you use the wrench while you're in the air with Ratchet, um, Hyper Striking in this game gains you some extra height. I've used that a couple times throughout the run. Um, so if we, if we do the, the high jump with Clank and then Hyper Strike in a certain spot, we can get up to a platform that allows us to jump directly onto the vine. Um, so we still have to plant all the vine seeds, but we can skip the riding animation around on the vines, which saves, I think, 20 to 25 seconds. Um, so hopefully that goes well when we get there. Um, this area is pretty scary in terms of dying from enemies. This is the area where it's the easiest to just get hit by a random attack and, and die. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen. The main thing we have to do here is um, we save this one character by killing some enemies, and then we have to fight these two enemies called Hydra Tanks. And there's kind of an unfortunate thing that happens when you're fighting them where the way the controls for pulling off the shields that some of the enemies have are the same controls for pulling off a switch on the Hydra Tank. And so sometimes when you have to like pull off the Hydra Tank switches, the game will prioritize an enemy's shield instead. Um, which can lead to you like kind of getting stuck holding onto an enemy's shield. And if that happens enough times in a row, you have to essentially do extra phases of fighting the Hydra Tank. Um, because the way the Hydra Tank fights work, they're kind of just out with all the other enemies. And they take damage, and once they get to a third of their life, they, they do a thing. There's a trend in this game where like once an enemy gets down to it, sorry, two thirds of its life, it becomes invulnerable temporarily, then you do another third, and then it becomes invulnerable, and then you do the last third of health. Um, in between those, you have to pull off these little switches, and that can 
cause problems if the enemies don't cooperate with you. So we're skipping a bunch of plot cutscenes, and then we're going to go into the past. Basically into a war um, is what's going on in the, in the story. So I'm going to buy the buzz blades right now. Whoops. So I'm going to do a thing with uh, the leveling for these where, because I have to get these to level four right now, I'm going to kill some of these guys over here, two of them to be more precise. Okay, so I got the experience from killing those two guys, and now I'm going to refill my ammo, and now I'm going to go fight the guys that I want to fight. Um, so I just did that to get a little extra experience. That, that routing was done by uh, Peanut, who I mentioned earlier, um, and it makes this area much more doable. So from now on, expect to see the dance glove a lot. Most of the enemies we fight from this point on are just going to dance while we kill them. Uh, that's pretty much the trend for endgame. So we kind of set up this thing for the end of the game where a lot of the fights are, are trivialized by this, particularly the boss fights. Groovitron is the most fun way to die, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm use another one. I have a challenge for the chat. Did you guys know that we are under $1,200 away from 20K? Ooh. I think we should hit that soon. I think we Sounds should hit good. that. Keep that in mind, everybody. All right, so there are two Hydra tanks. This one, the other one was actually closer to where I was, but I'm going to come and fight this one first because the other one is surrounded by a lot of enemies, and it's kind of a pain to deal with. So this is just kind of a, like, quality of life measure. And I'll kill some of these guys if they run up to me. As soon as the buzz blades hit level four, I'm going to switch weapons and use the, the bomb glove for the remainder of the fight, because the bomb glove actually does a lot more damage and is a better weapon to use for these fights. But I want to finish leveling up the buzz blades right now. All right, so I just did B4, so now I'm going to switch to the bomb glove. And that'll make this go a lot faster. Now I'll come over and fight the other one that I kind of ran past. And as you can see, like that already was a third of his health. Like the bomb glove is, is really powerful here. Okay. Okay. As long as this lets me grab it. Cool. That was pretty good. That can be a lot more painful than that, so no complaints. So now we're going to do the thing with the vine seeds I was mentioning. I have to plant these three vine seeds, and then we're going to do the, the newest trick in the run. Got time for a quick donation before that? Yeah, go ahead. All right. We have $10 donation from Anonymous. He says, Lombax has such a kind voice, <laughs> making this run very enjoyable. Keep up the good work. Thank you. All right, so in just a second, the cutscene's going to play, and then I'm going to go through this portal. And I'm going to come back through immediately, because I'm going to skip riding the vine. And I'm going to hopefully not mess this up. Come on, Ratchet. Please. There we go. So yeah, that was found by Mobius. Um, that's the most recent addition to this run. And it takes us right to the boss. Whoops, I'm supposed to use these. As this boss is the same thing, you have to do damage to him in a third, chunks of a third of his life. But you can kind of keep hurting him after you're supposed to be able to. Like, as you notice right now, I'm still kind of doing damage to him. Well, he was lowering. I was expecting there to be ammo there. It's okay. 
it's a little slower than it should have been. I thought there would be an extra ammo thing. Same deal, we're pulling out these switches or whatever. And then for this last phase, we have to, uh, oh, that, that's what's going on. The box is over here. That's why it's not respawning. That's really weird. All right, and then we do the last third of his life. And uh, that'll be about it for this planet. All right, so now we're going back to the present, which is changed because we changed the outcome of like that battle. Um, and so now we have the ship we can we can use after we collect these battery bots really quick. All right, so this is going to take me back to Space Station, but not to the interior part of it. So basically, the only two things I have left to do are to fight Nefarious and then to fight the last boss. Um, so yeah. So this is going to take us to Space Station, and we're going to basically just go to the boss as quickly as possible. I think we can throw in a donation real quick? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. We have a $5 donation from Apotheos. Who says, more donations for more chances to win those wonderful prizes. Oh, good point. Ratchet Deadlocked was my favorite. Oh, it was my childhood. And this game seems really great, too. Good luck to Lombax. Thank you. Attention. Starship signature 9099 Delta has just arrived at landing platform Okay, that works. <laughs> So the only difference between regions in this game is this platform moves faster in NTSC than in PAL. So NTSC is about 16 seconds faster than PAL because of this platform ride. Other than that, the versions are the same. Uh, yeah, I'll try this thing. This is another thing Mobius found. There used to be a different way of doing what I'm doing right now. But I'm gonna try his method. Okay, it pretty much worked out. So right now I'm gonna change to default controls. Um, because for the last, bo for the boss fights at the end, default controls are much better. Um, I really don't like default controls, I always play on shooter, but you basically have to switch to default controls for these boss fights. Because they make you auto lock, on it makes you auto lock onto enemies in front of you. Um, so it makes like all of your buzz blades hit, no matter what, which is really important. This fight is divided into phases as well. Um, so that was the first phase. There's another phase just like this. We're gonna have to run around this track a little bit. Um, and then there'll be a second phase where we fight him. It's a bit more involved. And then there's a third phase after, afterwards as well. Um, so between each of the phases, um, you kind of do this thing where you run around this track. And they, it gets progressively harder. Um, like first, it's pretty straightforward. You just kind of you just follow him and jump over these things. It doesn't really get much more interesting, to be honest, but there is kind of a trap they set for you, which I'll talk about in a second. So during this phase, he summons like extra enemies to help him out. So he's gonna make these, these three guys. And uh, I'm gonna do a trick here to skip a phase of enemies. I'm gonna pull out a Zircon and a Dance Glove. And hopefully this works. Um, he should die without making a group of ships. So if he dies here, that's what I'm hoping for. Good. Okay, so sometimes he'll make an extra wave, an extra group of like these, the blue ships from earlier. Um, that's part of why you need V4 buzz blades because you want to be able to do enough damage to him while he's dancing there so that he's unable to take the action of making more enemies. It's not the only reason you want V4 buzz blades, but that's a big part of it. 
So during this part, um, it looks like you can just jump, jump over the rows of three, but then he does that after some of them, so you want to just stay on the opposite side of what he's doing. Um, so yeah, now we're just kind of following him to the last uh, platform where we'll do the last phase of the fight. Which again, this phase is just going to be try to get him dancing and then just shoot buzz blades at him. Is he just like destroying his own base? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he really doesn't like you. <laughs> just um, wanted to clarify. <laughs> yeah, he takes it. He takes it pretty far. There's a thing that could happen during this fight where this laser that's spinning around can sometimes hit him, and it's actually really strong. It does a lot of damage to him if he's near it. So I want to get close to him so if he dances. Hopefully that works good. And so I want to kind of manipulate this yellow laser to hit him. I don't think it did just there. Hopefully it does some damage to him right now. Come on, come on laser, work with me. Looks like the laser's not going to help me out. Oof, our health's really low. All right, that's not very good. We're going to have to do that last part again. Hopefully this time he, he stays dancing. How about a donation for some motivation? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> We've got a $10 donation from Linz, who says, Lombax, you are awesome. Great commentary. Keep it up. Thank you. Yeah, the laser is not working with me here. Let's try this this time. No, that's not as good. Okay, well, we got through it. <laughs> um, so all that's really left in the game is the last boss fight. So there's another cutscene, and there's kind of a twist ending for this game. So if you've never played it before, here's your official spoiler warning. Because um, everything from this point on is like huge spoilers for the game. So what's going to happen right now, with that said, is uh, Nefarious dies here. This is his last game in the Ratchet and Clank series. He, this is like your final fight with him. Um, and then you end up going to the Great Clock, which is where Clank has been the whole time and all the stuff we skipped, all the Clank gameplay. Um, and our friend Azimuth from earlier kind of kind of betrays us a little bit, um, as you'll see in a minute here. A lot of the important parts of this, it's funny, with the cutscenes in this game, a lot of the important ones are skippable, and the ones that don't matter so much are unskippable. Um, so like a really important cutscene at the end of this game, I'm gonna skip, and it's gonna be kind of like what just happened. Um, but I don't, wanna, I don't wanna give anything away just yet, so. So we defeated Nefarious. It's, you're kinda, I think when you're playing through this game for the first time, you're supposed to feel like the game's over. Like I beat Nefarious, that was kind of what everything was about. And then this happens. Um, so we're, we're back at the clock. Back. Uh, we haven't been here before because we skipped it. But Clank has spent a bunch of time here. Um, so the great clock is kind of like a time machine-ish thing in this game. And Clank was, was kind of tasked with taking care of it. Um, I kind of have to give a lot of backstory to the Ratchet and Clank series to get too into this. But long story short, Ratchet and, and Azimuth are the only of their species left in this dimension um, because of some events that happened a long time ago. And Azimuth wants to use the clock to go back in time and change that, but Ratchet doesn't want to mess with time because it's irresponsible. So Azimuth um, gets really upset with us, and he, he kills Ratchet because um, his idea is that He'll go back in time and like kind of save him in the past, right? 
But what Ratchet and Clank have been trying to tell him is like, we can't, we can't mess around with the past because the clock isn't really meant to be used for dramatic changes like that. So now, um, if you missed Clank, we're going to play as him for another 30 seconds. And then we're going to skip a really important cutscene. Um, and everything will be okay again. So this is more of the same thing. I'm just doing those, um, if you remember from the very beginning of the run, I'm doing those like double jump cancels that I talked about um, when I'm jumping. And then I just go into this room. And that's about it for Clank. And then we're going to skip this really long, really important cutscene where Clank like, decides to use the clock to bring back Ratchet and save him. And now Ratchet's alive again, and everything's fine. I wonder if it would have been better if you just hadn't explained <laughs> anything. Maybe. <laughs> we just had to guess. Yeah. Um, so now we're chasing Azimuth, and we're going to have our final fight with him in just a second here. The, the real uh, last boss of the game. Um, this, this boss is really easy. Um, you basically can't mess it up, because all that we're going to do is make him dance over and over again while we attack him. So we really don't interact with him much at all. Um, again, you're going you're gonna to really see how unfair the, the dance glove is in a second here. Another cool thing they did with this game is um, it was released, I think, around when Michael Jackson died. And so all of the bosses, they made them do dances um, that Michael Jackson was famous for. So for example, he'll do like the, the disco dance. If you saw earlier, he'll, he like moonwalks and stuff too. Um, Nefarious earlier does uh, like the thriller dance. I should have pointed it out when it happened, but that's a cool little trivia piece of trivia about this game. So yeah, he's just dancing, and we're just gonna shoot him. Um, that's basically this whole fight. We're just gonna do this for like another minute, and then he'll then he'll be done. So halfway through, there's going to be a little cutscene that we skip. OK, good. I got a buzz blade refill. So skip this, and then we just do the same thing again. And pull out Zircons for extra damage. I didn't really talk too much about Zircons, but basically, you kind of just pull them out at various times in the run. That was unlucky. It didn't give me the ammo I wanted. You pull them out at various times in the run just um, to do extra damage during boss fights or to, to enemies where you, where you need them. So time is coming up pretty soon. Time is going to be when the loading checkpoint logo appears in the bottom left. Whoops, I didn't do that right. Throw it. There we go. Um, so get ready for that pretty soon. You're right, the Groovatron just, just takes away a lot of yeah. the seriousness. Time. All right, so not, not the run I was hoping for, but uh, good first, a good first entry for the future series of GDQs. Um, 155, that's it's not great, but we'll check the in-game time, because that's what matters more. Um, this game is pretty unoptimized right now, because I haven't had much time to run it since a lot of the newer tricks have been found. So in in-game time, my PB right now, uh, the world record right now is I think it's a 111.34. I'm expecting this to probably be like a 115, something significantly worse. Um, but we'll see. Uh, this game also, so this game has a pretty small community. Um, there's not very many people actively working on this game or running it right now. Um, so if anyone's interested, we could definitely use the help because this game has a lot more potential to be broken more than it currently is. All right, so our in-game time, the 1.16.02, which is a very bad time. But uh, you know, that's how it goes. Um, sometimes that's, that's just how it is. But yeah, um, thanks to GDQ for having me. I hope the rest of the event goes, goes great. Um, yeah, that's, that's a crack in time. All right. 
I personally thought that was a super fun run to watch. So great work. Once again, Lombex. All right, guys, just a quick reminder. You guys were amazing and helped us hit that Turok 100%. So we will be doing that in just a minute. Also, a quick reminder, GDQ Express is helping to represent many charities this weekend through Tiltify, including Able Gamers, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, Call of Duty Endowment, Direct Relief, Doctors Without Borders, Extra Life, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, Save the Children, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, and To Write Love on Her Arms. For more information on the charities and the broadcasters representing each organization, check out twitchcon.tiltify.com. I appreciate you all hanging out with me this evening and checking out these awesome, awesome runs. I'm going to be passing it off now to Extra Toppings 66. So thank you so much. This is, again, Kung Fu Fruit Cup. Have a great night, you guys. All right, so coming up next is Bakba Soup with Turok Dinosaur Hunter. And we did meet the incentive for the 100% version of that, so that's what we're getting here at GDQ Express. And we have a great lineup of games coming up next. After Turok is Beyblade V-Force, Ultimate Blader Jam, Star Wars Ness, and then Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. And just a reminder, there is a bid war for the Chip and Dale game where you can choose the chipmunks and, uh, chipmunk of choice. You can either play as Chip or Dale. Earlier, they were one penny apart, but now Chip has pulled the head and is roughly $50 ahead of Dale. So if you prefer Dale to your chip, get those donations in now. As another reminder, if you donate a cumulative $100 throughout the entire marathon, you'll be entered for a chance to win an AMD Ryzen 5 gaming PC. That doesn't have to be all in one big donation. You could do $25 donations, four $25 donations, one 
$95 donation and, 90, and then a $5 donation, or really any other combination to 100